Good morning. And welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday of Easter, or Good Shepherd Sunday. A special welcome to um, guests and family of uh, those, the two uh, youth receiving communion for the first time today, receiving first communion. The liturgy is on page three of the bulletin with the picture on the front. I'll refer to this bulletin by page number. There's an insert with the music and the readings. Um, there are hearing assistive devices in the narthex. Welcome. Amen.
we turn to page three. Please rise as you are able. <clears throat> Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and we are born anew. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Satisfy our need through your living water. Where guilt and sin debilitate, grant mercy and faith. Where despair prevails, grant hope. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. rejected. This is the Lord's doing. This is the day that the Lord has made. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share a sign of that peace.
Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Invite you to be seated, except for children. Invite children to come forward. Let's see. Um, there we go. We got a new one for Easter, and it's a little taller than the other one. The other one was shorter. But we, it's a very special candle. It's a special candle. It's lit on, and it's lit today, but it's so tall that you can't really see it. But it's lit, right? Yeah. Yep, they can, they can see it from way back there. It's tall. It's lit on special occasions for baptisms. Uh, when somebody gets baptized and they get a little candle that gets lit on that candle. When somebody dies and there's a funeral and during all seven weeks of Easter. And we're on the fourth Sunday of Easter this week, so it's lit during Easter. It's called the Easter candle or the Paschal candle, which means Easter. It's, um, and so it's a special candle, and it celebrates, whenever it's on, we really celebrate that Jesus is alive, and he's living. So it's, we're especially celebrating that right now, because the candle's on. If you see the candle, we're really celebrating that Jesus is alive and with us and living. Okay, so let's pray. God, thank you for raising Jesus from the dead and making him live now and here, and in our hearts. Amen. Okay, so anybody going back to child care, Mrs. Drake and Miss Gabby are going. You can follow them back, or you can go back and sit with your parents, whichever you, your parents wish. And we continue with the readings for the day.
A reading from Acts, the fourth chapter. The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Anas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people people and elders, If we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, For there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Psalm 23 to be read responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Each year on the fourth Sunday of Easter, all of the points, te- all of the texts point to God as humanity's good shepherd. Now, shepherd was a word packed full of Jewish meaning for the early Christians. Not only was a favorite king, David, King David, chosen while he was a young shepherd in Israel back in the day. But the word shepherd also meant king. For example, take the 23rd Psalm. It's really a confession that God is above the nation, above the king, that God is the king above all kings and nations. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my king, who I can trust to provide and protect me above this nation's king or this nation in our day. Human beings 
have a deep desire, I think, to idealize leaders. That is, we like to have heroes. Actually, I think all ages do. Um, however, the biblical understanding of sin means that idealism doesn't work when it comes to leaders or to any human being. The more perfect you think a person is, the more disappointed you'll be. The higher the pedestal, the longer the fall, right? Because in the end, all noble figures in our world or in our lives, all national or religious heroes, all pastors, all leaders, all humans, let us down. It's just simple reality. They're broken human beings just as we are. They're like the hired hand in the gospel reading. Sometimes leaders can even be like the wolf, yes? And so from Acts, the first reading, Peter speaks to the religious leaders who handed Jesus over to be crucified. He reveals God's condemnation, whom you crucified, he says to them. And it's not a condemnation of the Jewish religion, Peter considers himself at this time to be Jewish and Jesus to be Jewish. He's turning the mirror on the people so they can see what they've done. The question, they question his authority. And Peter turns the question around. Look what happens when you have authority, folks. You don't do so well. But Peter doesn't leave it there. The final words in this text, smack of invitation and mercy. The one who healed this man can heal all people, even you, he says. Having authority and power is a huge responsibility because we affect others. And many times we don't see how we affect others. Even with parenting, which Lutherans think of as the origins of all authority from the fourth commandment, honor your father and mother. My pastor, I think I've said this before, Frank Fry, who had five children, would say, their mother and I have probably been the best influence on their lives and also probably the worst influence on their lives. And he said, the scary thing is, I'm not sure exactly when we did each. Given all of that, I want to point to you to a leader that you can trust, who won't let you down, Jesus. In Jesus, we have a leader who fully invests himself in us, who lays down his life for us. He's not merely interested in those who are lovable, or those who are good, or those who appear worthwhile to the world, he's interested in those who aren't any of those things, maybe especially those people, those ones. Christ Jesus, who changes our minds and our hearts, especially when we convince ourselves that we're absolutely 100% right. Christ Jesus, who assures us that he will find us, even if we feel lost to ourselves. He'll find us, including when we gather each week, coming to us through the word and also through a little wafer and a little wine each week to come to us, be really present with us, to forgive us as Santo and Olivia um, discussed in our little instruction before worship today. Here is one leader we can always 100% trust. No matter which leader we've elected, no matter which leader we find charismatic, no matter which leader you've called to be your pastor. Disclaimer, I'm not planning on making any large faux pas in the near future, but you never know. I'm a saint and a sinner, serving a congregation of saints and sinners in a broken world. No matter, 
What I've promised to do as your pastor is continually to point to the real leader, the good shepherd. Most people here this morning, I guess, are in some capacity leaders or have been in their lives, having authority over people, whether a whole department or a few people over students or at home as parents of children. And we will use our gifts as leader brilliantly at times. And we shall fail at other times. But our identity as a human being is not to be tied up in our success or failure as any leader. For Christians, our identity is tied to baptism because we end up failing mildly and sometimes spectacularly in life. Actually, being Christians means that in the eyes of the world, we actually will not measure up because we value things that are different than the world values, such as meeting hatred with love, which is foolish, praying for our enemies, being willing to appear weak for the neighbor. Those things have never been championed in our world. That's why heads of state, heads of department, co-heads of household, and little children getting baptized need a shepherd. Because we cannot fail at baptism. It's a gift that God gives to us. Promised in baptism is God as our good shepherd, who will be there during the good times and the bad times, through green pastures, rocky cliffs, mountaintops, and valleys of the shadow of death. When everybody else lets us down, including our government, our pastors, our parents, our children, our spouses and bosses, there is one leader who promises by the cross that he will not let us down. Jesus Christ, our good shepherd. Amen. Please rise. Page six, 
We confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In our prayers this week are the Copens. Uh, we pray traveling mercies for them as they make their way to Germany this week. We also pray for Tammy Ox, who will have upcoming shoulder surgery this week. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Today's response is, hear our prayer. Shepherding God, gather your church whenever we wander from you and one another. Empower our church in ministries around the world to worship and serve alongside global companions as co-workers in the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, lead nations and communities to share resources cooperate in solving conflicts, and work peace, O Lord, where there is now enmity, including in Ukraine, Russia, Palestine, Israel, and Iran. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, protect the very young and the very old, those living without housing or health insurance, and all who live with chronic illness, or compromised immune systems. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, help this and all communities of faith to listen for your voice. Call us away from things that distract us from following you and lead us into more deeply loving and serving our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, help us to place everything that is on our hearts into your merciful hands, trusting in the mercy that you've revealed through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Please be seated.
Page eight, let us pray together. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O King of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us boldly to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just a few notes about distribution of communion. All are welcome to the table. Uh, it will Distribution will be by intinction, which means dipping the wafer into the wine, so hold on to your wafer. Um, we do have gluten-free wafers and grape juice available. Um, grape juice is white, wine is red. The ushers will guide you forward. Come to receive Christ poured out for you.
Please rise. Let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. announcements and um, I'm getting the microphone ready for anybody who's interested in announcing please start making your way forward um, Mother's Day annual campaign monetary donations uh, through Mother's Day will support blankets purchased and sent around the world through Lutheran World Relief the deadline is Mother's Day uh, Saturday, May 4th is cleanup day from 9 to 11 a.m. We're going to get a shipment of mulch and we need to spread it around to keep the weeds down during the uh, year. So bring shovels, rakes, tarps, wheelbarrows, um, whatever you can. Uh, Jancy, do you want me to announce or are you going to announce? So Fred, while she's on her way up, you can do it. Thank you. 
morning, everybody. I just want to let you know, uh, this is week two of a three-week uh, Bible, uh, adult Bible study we're doing. Uh, it's going to be in, in Faith Hall next door right after the service. Uh, this week, it, the, the, the series is on Jesus' death and resurrection, and this week we're up to Holy Week. So we're going to talk about Holy Week, how the New Testament points towards the events of Holy Week, and, uh, and the significance of that for us as Christians. Wednesday, May 15th, we have Confirmation Mentor Night, but also uh, Congregational Dinner Night, marinated London broil, mashed potatoes, green beans, and dessert. Free will offering goes to the Youth Gathering Fund. And also another date farther in the future, Saturday, June 8th, 3 p.m., we're having a Hawaiian dinner with some activities right by. And uh, it will feature Hawaiian type food, maybe chicken teriyaki. It will be 3 o'clock in the afternoon and it should be a lot of fun. So come out, bring a friend, enjoy the afternoon. Excellent. Uh, come and join us. Oh. Good morning. Um, so I don't know if, if everyone has heard, but we have a very good problem. Um, we are full for Bible school already. Within the first week of signups, we had full house and we already have a waiting list. Um, so if you are able to give any time the week of June 24th to June 28th, it's 9 to 12, um, we would love and um, would appreciate your help. We especially need camp counselors to kind of shepherd the children from station to station. So if you are able to help, please reach out to myself, my mother, Marsha Horner, or Judy Bumpus, and uh, we hope to see you there. So thank you. Yep, right, good problem to have. We need your help. Please join us for coffee hour in the hall behind the church. Um, and there's a special cake for our first communicants to celebrate with them. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. Oh, okay, I'll get that in there. Thank you.